and I'm very glad to join you today to talk about the Global Arbovirus Initiative, a joint program between WHO Health Emergency Program, a joint initiative, I mean, between WHO Health Emergency Program and the NTD and Immunization Program to prevent mosquito-borne viral epidemic and pandemic events. Uh, you can see in this map that uh, we have so many countries reporting iodine bone diseases, and dengue is the most widespread, with 130 countries reporting cases. You can see from the blue color, you know, we have countries which are reporting three or more viruses in circulation. And the green indicates the presence of two diseases, at least why other colors refer to one of the four iodine bone viruses that are of great concern. As you can see, the majority of the world has poor circulation of diseases, as many as they share the same vector when drivers of transmission and an integrated initiative to tackle transmission is a paramount. It's really important to see that countries are facing multiple risks in many continents, and the risk to have a pandemic-like event is even bigger. We will remember 2016, 2017, a big you know, fever outbreak in Angola, the Congo, spreading to China, and the same time, you know, fever outbreak happening in Brazil and other parts of South America. So during the last decade, we also have chikungunya emerging and spreading across Americas, Asia, as well as in many African countries. Also in some countries, the capacity to detect is still very low. But in 2015, the world, the world was really struck by the Zika emergence in the Pacific Islands, and subsequently in Brazil before spreading rapidly across the region and leading to the public health emergency of international concern, as we remember. And by 2019, when the Arbovirus Initiative was identified as the cross-cutting activity for WHO, the world was facing several dengue outbreak in many countries and in many continents. And we have reached the highest rate of you know, dengue transmission across continent. And the COVID-19 pandemic has also exposed Amplified, amplified our vulnerability to emerging infectious diseases like chikungunya, Zika, yellow fever, and dengue. And uh, these viruses have made significant inroads in the population and region during the acute phase of the COVID-19 pandemic because of the disruption of so many interventions. So it was very important you know, to adopt an integrated approach to combine the critical component of disease detection, prevention, and control. And this includes entomological and morbidity surveillance, laboratory capacity, clinical management, vector control, and community engagement. And WHO is in a unique position to raise the global alarm regarding the risk of agrovirus epidemic and potential pandemic. Our impact will be stronger if we work together. We have a global alert and verification system, but we need to make sure that when we are able to detect those signals and confirm them, we come together as you know, a, glo a global partner to, to, to control the events. So the Arbovirus Initiative is situated formally within the One Health approach and address all aspects of high tech pathogen from you know, the alert, the pandemic prevention, preparedness, detection, and response. And as you just highlighted, Lord three, the climate change requires our attention to uh, increase in global temperature, the changing pattern of uh, precipitation, bring up of viruses, diseases to new, previously unaffected areas, or to reintroduce the diseases where they have been eliminated. We are already seeing, you know, increased frequency of Arbovirus diseases in some part of Europe, but also in so many countries in the world. And I'm pleased to say, however, that integration is already happening from outside because the Global Arbovirus Initiative sits under the umbrella of the WHO Triple B on target and complements the elimination of yellow fever epidemic strategy we developed in 2017 2018, as well as the Global Vector Control Response Initiative. 
Um, it's also I'm pleased to say a major component of my own programs, the Global NTD program, because I want to make sure that we work across program, starting from the risk, the capacity we need to detect, to respond, and a well-coordinated global approach. So WHO is uniquely positioned globally to raise our alarm, as I said earlier, but we want to make sure that we work in a perfect coordination with partners, not only at global level, but at regional and national level to convert partners and coordinate this initiative. Because as we always say, that is no global without local. We need to make sure that everything we say in this initiative can be applied at the local level with a very decentralized system. So for the Global Arbor Virus Initiative, now it's built in existing disease specific program, not only integrating the diseases, but also integrating the critical components that I outlined just outlined it before. So we have six main pillars in this initiative. Um, the pillar one consists of monitoring and anticipating the threat by means of global risk monitoring tool and by modeling potential epidemic and pandemic scenario for arboviruses using collaborative intelligence from you know so many sectors environment animal health you know and human health and others monitoring airborne bone disease is currently based on information about mosquito presence and population density however we do not have a global tool that allows for real-time monitoring of risk and for early detection of arboviruses transmission via multiple pathogens and local and global level. So we need to work strongly on that. The pillar two is mainly on the relation epidemic risk um, seek to strengthen early detection, increase capacity for field investigation, and improve the response to arboviruses outbreak. This also includes increasing population protection against yellow fever through the elimination of the air strategy. Since we started the air strategy in 2018, we have been able to vaccinate more than 400 million people and protect it against yellow fever. So the most effective way to improve early detection response is to support countries' capacity for preparedness, early detection, laboratory confirmation, and immediate epidemiological investigation. This is a key priority for the global arboviruses. viruses. For yellow fever, for example, in 2018, we only have one the first laboratory in the African region was actually Pasteur Dakar. And now we have four or five reference centers to confirm the yellow fever outbreak. And we continue to increase. And the third pillar focus on vector control through so enhanced environmental and vector surveillance, something across sector, and increasing preparedness in urban setting and densely populated area. We all know now with you know, vector bond diseases, the uh, risk and vulnerability in some of the city has increased because of, you know, the unplanned urbanization, the density of the population, and so many other social factors that really lead to increase the density of the mosquito population. And the fourth pillar also is about global coordination, global surveillance mechanism for rapid response. And uh, this is really important for that be sure as we build capacity for countries and partners to be able to implement everything we said at local level. This is the fifth pillar on innovation and new approaches. We have been talking about research and development during our last two days meeting, but we want to make sure that using our existing system like the Aaron Blueprint for Epidemic, we can work end by end process from research and development, production, you know, supply and utilization at country level. Um, in the sixth pillar, in the next slide, um, and the final one of the Global Arbor Virus Initiative, build on coalition, partnership, and um, perhaps the most important point because we have so many components, so many pillars that need various organizations, various institutions, all working together in a coordinated manner to with the countries, with the national and local level. That's why this meeting is extremely important and we need the coalition to ensure effective implementation where needed. And uh, we need to strengthen and coordinate existing partnership. And we need to invite, encourage, and build new ones because we cannot only rely on our old relationship, old system. We need to make sure that we are inclusive and we address the complexity together. 
The task we have at hand is to mobilize global and local resources to stimulate investment and to catalyze action. So a much central global partnership and a forum of stakeholders committed to tackling iris bone diseases and the widespread epidemic threat they pose is the key success. Once our engagement includes governments, the private sector, academia, international organization, we can develop a native communication platform that will ensure the timely dissemination of relevant information to multiple audiences across the globe. And I hope that um, I've given you an overview, a very brief and quick overview of the key element of the initiative to just reassure you that for us, this is a platform for collaboration. And uh, we are very happy to be able to talk to you today. And uh, I can ensure you that I, along with my entire team, remain at your disposition to answer any question and to, most importantly, continue working with you to make this initiative a reality at country level. Thank you very much.